Lisa Fithian has been called the Dean of Resistance Training, a reputation earned over nearly four decades of protest that have included more arrests than she can remember and more students than she can count. Today, we add five more to that last column. All right, I want you to do that again. Okay. Ready? Go. I can kick my dog any time I want to kick my dog. Get out of my face, lady. Why are you looking at me like a crazy person? It's my right to be here and do whatever I want to do. What's wrong with you? Why are you looking at me? Say something. Get out of my way. You ready to see this crazy lady? What are you doing? Let me ask you, was it harder for it's you to maintain to that if I'm not? Who's calm. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so part of what we learn is it like if, if, if you're escalating and I escalate, we're going to go like this. But if I come down, yeah. you're not going to be able to sustain it. No. Now you're pretty good at that, but well, you know, so. I have a lot of rage. All right, there you go. <laughs> part of one of the things that we learn when we're engaging people in situations of conflict is that there's a variety of strategies we can use to kind of either, it's either going to piss people off more or bring them down. How we look at them, how we hold our bodies, all make a difference. Yes, one person can change the world, but when you and I link up, there's a whole other thing that goes on. Why like, I got interested in looking at direct action is because it works. L.A. Kaufman adds theory and context to the practice of direct action. She's a strategist, journalist, and disruptor who spent 30 years immersed in radical movements some of which is chronicled in her new book, Direct Action, Protest, and the Reinvention of American Radicalism. Movements are driven by their more radical edge, right? It's the people who have the boldest vision and the most sweeping vision of change and who are tactically the boldest, who often kind of push things forward. They're rarely the people who work out the final deal. I was very involved in the fight around um, New York City's community gardens in the late 90s and um, we used all kinds of intense direct action to ultimately win that fight, uh, including most famously we um, smuggled 10,000 crickets into police headquarters and disrupted a real estate auction, a city land auction where they were selling off community gardens by releasing all of these crickets. The next auction we were threatening even worse. Uh, they canceled it at the 11th hour and made a deal that saved all the gardens. It was the land trusts and the elected officials, and that was fine. Like some, you know, sometimes the way that these these Both struggles your play out. Work, they say, right, sometimes even if they're not at the table, this is what happens when you don't listen to the people we're aligned with. Exactly, listen to us, or you've got the cricket people coming after <laughs> you, right? Whatever your goal is, whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, you first, of course, want to identify who can make the change that you want to see. So who are your targets? And then you want to look at what are the pillars of support behind them. And you want to think about how you can target those pillars of support to leave them isolated so that the most sensible decision for them to make is to do what you want them to do instead of what they were planning to do. I mean, this is the classic theory of, of nonviolent resistance that Dr. King and many others um, developed. The advice that I give to people who are looking how to get involved is twofold. One is, is essentially to find your lane, to find a specific issue. You might decide you're going to work on immigrant rights, or you might decide that you're going to work on disability access. And the second part is to be willing to be mobilized. There are all these groups who are facing these moments of crisis and what they need are bodies and supporters. They say, we need you to show up at JFK airport now. Or they say, we need you to come down to the federal building. When, when people put out these alerts, really do it, really commit. Before you commit, it's good to know just what you may be up against. Okay, so we're gonna go into our final role play of blocking this prison. Part of what we're trying to do here is expose the violence of the police, but mitigate the harm on our bodies, right? Because when people see what the police are willing to do, it begins to change their hearts and minds. Yeah. Hear our voices, hear our sound. Shut this dirty prison down. Come here, eyes. No. Hear our voices, hear our sound. Shut this dirty prison down. Right here. You know what? When you link up like this, it is impossible to move you all. For the police, if they can't get you, they're going to escalate. If I have a baton and I'm shoving it through your arm, yeah. 
right? All I have to do is twist it and I can break your arm. If we get you out, I'm gonna take you out. Let's take you out just for the visual. And then slowly, okay, all right, we got one. Let's bring him over here. Okay, now we're gonna put you over here. We got you. Okay, all right, you're gonna sit down on the bus right over there. Right, so you've closed up again. If I can't get the baton in, my only other recourse is pepper spray or pain compliance holds. You guys did awesome, yeah. awesome. Now, now that was not so comfortable though, was it? If you were ever doing a blockade, you would want to be comfortable. Because right. sometimes the thing about these actions they is they let you wait you out and they let you sit. Just relax, you're all fine, whatever. Da 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 da. Okay, we're going. Out, out, out. Right? Out, out, out. See? So, again, in all of this stuff, yes, we're here to get somebody that's doing something bad to change their mind. But we're also here because we're building our relationships with one another. How do you use the fear and the adrenaline that is going through you? Fear is their most powerful tool. Like, courage is the antidote. Acting is the antidote to fear. I was watching the stuff that happened in Spain with the Catalonian people and them inside those schools and watching the brutality of those officers there kicking and like doing horrible things. Do you fight the urge to get up and swing on the officers to protect your friends? Is that a better technique or is like sitting down and sort of linking up a preventative thing? You can have a diversity of tactics, right? Where some people are engaging in uh, passive resistance and some people are, are actively confronting and fighting. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then uh, they fight you. And then you win. Right. Once we're going for it. Okay. That's theory and practice in direct action.